seen this play before. Absolutely. And, Congressman, we know that this has been the biggest part of your life. I, I imagine you've been wrestling with this issue for so long. It's, it has to have consumed just about every aspect of your life of dealing with the debt ceiling and looking for ways to make comparison, to relate it to people, to understand. And yesterday on Twitter, you, you made one that's uh, it's been met with a lot of um, uh, lashback. And that's on Twitter. You said, uh, no one could reach Amy Winehouse before it was too late. Can anyone reach Washington before it's too late? Both addicted, same fate. And you've received a lot of backlash for that. And you apologize. And I, I saw that you sent in, you apologize uh, from the Springfield News Leader. They're reporting that. I guess, you know, put it in context for us. I mean, a lot of people are saying it was insensitive. They were upset by the statement. They yeah, were and, upset I, by the I, and I'm, you know, I apologize, and I'm upset that anyone took it as a slide or, you know, thought that it was insensitive. I, of course, didn't dream that would be their take on it, or I never would have sent it. But mm -hmm. yesterday morning I was watching the news and watching her father speak on TV from a 2009 interview. Mm -hmm. And he said, we've tried and tried and tried and can't reach her. And... You know, when people are in that situation, whether it's Janis Joplin or Jimi Hendrix or whoever it is, performers that have addictive problems and addictive personalities, their friends or families trying to reach out to them and say, hey, you have a problem, you have a problem, you need help. And if they don't get to them in time, then their fate is what happened to Amy Winehouse. And I certainly didn't mean any. There's no stretch of the imagination that I meant a slight or tried to you know, politicize the situation, I said that we in Washington are addicted in a similar way. And people are telling us over and over and over, you have a problem. You have a problem. You need to quit spending money. You need to quit spending money. That's the analogy I was trying to make, Josh. And, it, you know, it obviously came off wrong. And I apologize for it to anybody that it did offend. I, you know, like I said, I didn't, certainly didn't mean anything by it and surely didn't see the offense in it or I wouldn't have said it in the first place. But do you get my point at all about uh, the, the I, analogy? I, I certainly can. I think that you know people need some more context to it. Obviously, whenever you're limited to 140 characters, I think it just it hit wrong. I think it was that 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 partiality of, of too soon was the reaction. But obviously, you were trying to address the serious issues, and you were trying to compare them to what people were relating with in the news now. I mean, so much attention is being given to Amy Winehouse. You were trying to draw that correlation. Obviously, well, yeah. I mean, it, it was you know, and like I said. It, mm -hmm. You know, if it was in poor taste, then I apologize for that. I certainly didn't mean it that way by any stretch. I mean, she was one of the few uh, young or, you know, few true artists to come out in the last several years. And mm -hmm. it, was a, it was, you know, tragic, tragic situation. It was tragic what happened to her. There were, there were other tweets that I'd seen other places that, you know, were almost poking fun or saying, well, who would have seen, who, you know, who didn't see that coming, Amy Winehouse. Right. Uh, you know, that, mm -hmm. to me, that is brutal. That's, that's you know, whatever. But what I, you know, like I said, I just, it, it came off wrong. I sent it out about noon. Politico picked it up immediately. My press guy said, you know, that tweet didn't come off very good or something. And, I, and I'm like, why? What? I'm just making the analogy that, mm -hmm. you know, she had an addictive problem. We have an addictive problem here. People warned her about hers, then it was too late. Are we going to wait till it's too late in this country? Are we going to ruin our country before we address our addiction to spending money? So that was, you know, that's what, and, uh, and he said, well, you know, we might get some pushback or whatever. So I'm sitting there in a Republican conference, and I type out this, you know, I said, well, if they, you know, I said, I'll be glad to apologize. I sure didn't mean any offense by it whatsoever, mm -hmm. you know, and I typed out a little apology, sent it to him. Nobody ever asked for it. Yeah. Until about 9.30 last night, a news later reporter, you know, we thought, well, you know, political or somebody will call and want to know, Why, what's that tweet mean? Mm -hmm. So I just typed out my little, you know, apology or whatever during conference yesterday and sent it to him. And then at 9.30 last night, I think one of the re uh, reporters for the news later called and wanted to response. And uh, you know, I said, well, just, I said, what's wrong with what I typed up? You send it to him, because that's exactly what I meant. So we sent that out last night. So, mm -hmm. like I said, there was no, you know, it just, you know, I'm very sorry if anybody did take offense. And that was my point was, I guess I could have used another analogy, but that was fresh in my mind. And I saw her dad there two years ago on TV. I mean, a 27 year old woman that, you know, had it all and had a long life ahead of her, but just had an addiction problem. And like I said, I was trying to make an analogy with us here in Washington, our addiction to spending money, and people have warned us for years and years mm -hmm. and years that there's going to be a comeuppance. And so. Well, Congressman Long, we, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about the debt ceiling and taking some of the tough questions. And we hope to talk to you very soon and encourage you to keep up the hard work and fight for the people there in Washington. It's always good to hear your all's voices. It makes me feel like I'm a little closer to home anyway. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you soon. Always a pleasure. Thank you, guys.